I thought I'd cover in this second part my Eversado DMP A6 video, how to use the interface, because I didn't really show that that well in the original video or didn't show it very much. So that's what I'm doing in this second part. Also, I think it'll be very popular because this is a popular product and people probably wanna know how to use this display. So obviously you push the volume button to turn it on and you'll get all these logos coming up like I showed in my 3D clip in my original video. And then you're confronted with this main screen. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is mirror the screen onto my iPad using the cast feature so you can see what I'm pressing. I'll also show little icons on the iPad screen, touchpad icons to show you what I'm actually pressing on the screen. Top right where the disc is, push that and that takes you to this main playback screen. Obviously you've got file format, sample rate and so on at the top, album name, artist, track left, track right, play, repeat icon, which you can press for a cycle, single cycle or shuffle play. And then to the right of that, you'll see the track list or rather play queue, it's called, which you can scroll down, take things out, close that. And then at the top, a little heart symbol, which you can press, and that will turn this track into being a favorite, which you can access another part of the app. Press it again, takes the favorite out. And then VU meters, this is the function that I showed in the video where you can add these to the display, which is a nice touch. Gives a bit of variability, makes it just something better to look at, isn't it? And then you can swipe left and right to have a look at different ones. We've got different ones here. And then again, bottom right, press the back button to go back to the main screen. You've also got above that, the home icon, which will do the same thing. Again, back track, forward track and play above that. But if I just push the bottom icon to go back, that takes me back to this main screen. Also, I hadn't said, you'll see the slider for volume down the side which obviously also works with the rotary volume knob at the front. Obviously, if you set the volume to variable mode, if you're going to be using this as a preamp to power amp, or if you just want to add volume control in some other way. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is the music app icon from the main screen. So if we push that, you go into a list of all the drives, or rather a list of all the music that's on the drive currently that I've got in the unit, the solid state drive. And the reason I know that is if I push this little left arrow icon at the side and go to the library tab at the bottom, you'll see that it states the 105 tracks have been added, the storage drive referring to that particular drive, I can press it and it shows me the name of the drive, which is what I actually named when I formatted it. I think someone asked me in the comments, how can I find my SSD drive? And I think perhaps they hadn't formatted the drive first and hadn't named it to know what to then look for. But this is essentially the easiest way to find your drive when you need to add music to it on your PC or Mac or whatever you might do in that respect. If we go back, to the music library, click on that arrow again, you can see that you can search in various different ways. So you've got tracks that have been recently played, recently added, recently added albums. These are tracks that are from this solid state drive. They're not, you know, Tidal, Quobars or whatever. And you also see at the bottom, you've got genres of music and as I was talking about before, the favorite track is added at the bottom from pressing the heart icon in the previous screen. If you go back again, you can do a list of all the artists. It shows it in a kind of rune style way with these round circles. Most people that use rune will be familiar with this. And then albums in the traditional manner. I've only added a few albums yet because this was just a test for my review. Some of my main kind of test music, or some of it is, some of it isn't. Bit of Todd Turley out of the doors, and um, yeah, a bit of Richard Hawley sounds really nice in testing hi fi gear. So does Rebecca Pigeon. Okay, a bit kind of Diana Crawl and 
you know, a bit, bit audio file, but who cares? Um, yeah, <laughs> back to my, and that shows me what I was talking about, favourites, as in favourite tracks, favourite artists, albums. The other thing to show you is that from the library sub menu, you can here add library. So this is where I obviously added the storage drive in the unit, the SSD drive, but you could add, say, an NAS drive on your network. I've got a Western Digital NAS drive with a load of music on in addition to my Inuos, so I could add that as a drive, which will then be picked up in this software. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is the streaming icon from the main screen, which is this big green one there. Push that and it says straight away at the top, please switch the source to the internal player for using music services. Just show you that quickly. If I go back and press the source icon, this is where you obviously change inputs. So you've got to make sure you're on the internal player to stream music from the internal player and, and stream music from the SSD and so on. You can also obviously select Bluetooth and then one of the free digital inputs, USB-C, optical or coaxial. And then obviously at the bottom, you'll see the outputs. You'll notice and hear outputs changing with the little clicks of this relay switch is kicking in as you change from say analog to balanced. At the moment I've got it set on SP diff, so I'll keep that. But if I go back, I go back into the streaming icon again, as I say, these are all the ones that you can stream and there's quite a few and they're being added to all the time. Once they're downloaded, then they become available. If I go back again and press the app icon, they become available here. Now these are the ones that use the Android style interface that I mentioned in the video. So for instance, if you press Quobuzz, this is what you'll get on an Android screen as you load that app up. This is opposed to, if I show you and go back, back again, and go into streaming, the streaming icon and press Tidal, you'll see that Tidal is built in into this particular interface on this screen. Important to stress that all of these apps are playing in their native quality. And one, if I just go back, app that is good that they've actually added quite recently, I understand. Someone else mentioned as part of their review is this, if you're in the UK, BBC Sounds app, so you can get all the podcasts and all the stuff the BBC put on. You have to obviously sign into your BBC account. Okay, well, the next thing I'm going to show you is the Files app. So if I push that, big yellow app in the middle. At the top you'll see 13.7 gigabytes of 32 gigabytes. Now that's obviously the internal storage of the unit and it's being used up by all these folders and subfolders. Obviously the apps associated to the internal storage. And then if I push the SSD below, again that shows me all the subfolders associated to the SSD music drive that I've got in this unit. Obviously there's going to be metadata pictures and so on associated to those music files. So I did already cover the source icon, but if I just show you that if I push one of these top left icons near the time, if I push the player icon, that takes me to the source again. I go back and push the one next to it, which looks like the optical and coax digital connection. That takes me again to the same screen. So that's for obviously changing those. And the same if I push on the one next to that for wired and wireless networks. And then next to that, obviously that is going to go back into the screen that we just looked at because that's associated with finding the USB pen drives if you're putting a USB drive into the back of this ever solo. I think the volume is also shown as well. And if you change the slider on the screen, you'll see that change with volume. Obviously, it's to show you the volume when you're in a different screen. OK, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is this settings app icon. So if we push that, obviously takes you into the settings. The first sub menu at the top left is for audio and you can change audio, XLR and RCA output settings. Change the DAC filters. I showed that in the original video. You've got settings for boot volume and volume offset 
and then you've got a setting for if you click on left side setting for display change the screen brightness sort your your knob brightness out back from that you'll see you've got a setting for screen saver screen saver mode you can set different clocks as well which is quite neat use this as a as a clock whilst everything times out go back again there are settings obviously for the network wide network wi-fi at the moment i've got wi-fi unconnected as you can see connected via ethernet not ethernet someone picked me up on although i don't think there is a correct way of saying ethernet or ethernet depends on where you're from the samba service obviously shows you the ip addresses associated to that um, as well as passwords and if you click on the phone control i think this is just to download the app so it shows you the qr codes in order to do so if we go back from that and go into general then you've got settings for language input method with the keyboard the usb otg port is the additional usb socket at the back which you can set for either file transfer from pcs or an external storage drive you have to set this appropriately if you're ripping using a cd ripper i didn't actually get my cd drive to work as i showed in my first video but you set this appropriately here and then if you click on this transfer tab this shows you the ip addresses and mac addresses associated to the unit so that you can go in on your finder app on your mac or the internet browser um, on your windows pc windows explorer i mean and obviously put in the ip addresses and you can link straight up to transfer files across so you could find the ever so low solid state drive in the unit and transfer the music over if you click on about that's where it shows you all the information the blurb about the unit and the processors that are used and so on and so forth and ram and so on uh, dax used and then if you click on this little icon at the top where it says version press that that's for obviously where you update the software and um yeah you can either do it over the internet or do it as a usb update if i go back actually i didn't show you if i go back again and go into the apps i didn't show you the cd ripping app which is this one here top left push that that will show you a list of what's on the drive if you've got a compatible drive as i said in my video my one wasn't actually compatible it turns out so i'll need to buy a different cd ripping drive if i'm going to use this feature but yeah i mean that's about it really that's kind of a basic overview of this interface and what you can and can't be using and yeah it's a very 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 nice feature to use and very very good to have this level of feedback of all the things that you're using and the music you're playing.